Hello there, I'm Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really well. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Shure SH55 microphone. It's an XLR dynamic microphone, and it's from one of the most trusted brands and well-respected and oldest brands in the audio microphone market. For those of you that don't know, Shure make the SM7B, which is probably the single most popular streaming microphone. This particular microphone, the SH55, uses very similar hardware, the cartridge inside of it. It uses the Unidyme cartridge with some actual tweaks to it, so it's very similar hardware to the SM7B but for a third of the price. So you can imagine I was quite compelled by this as well as a few other factors when I was looking at upgrading from a USB HyperX quadcast and eventually went with the SH55. So in this video I'm going to be going through my own experiences with this microphone as a content creator making YouTube videos and streaming. I want to precursor this video by saying I am absolutely not an audio expert however what I would say is I've learned quite a lot researching different microphones for my own purpose, but also for content as well. I've also got a lot of streamer friends that have got different microphones that I've had conversations with about as well. So whilst I'm not an expert, my experiences should hopefully add value on whether or not you make a decision on buying this. So first of all, a little bit about the microphone. It is absolutely iconic. It's beautiful. It's regarded as the Elvis microphone. It's quite a rare microphone to see, even in the audio space for like music, recording and things like that. I've not seen a single streamer with this microphone. That was one of the compelling things for me that would just catch people's eye. Something that will become a little bit more rememberable. This microphone's quite a chunky microphone. It's made of aluminium and it's got quite a reasonable price point for an XLR microphone. So combined with the Go XLR Mini, I thought this was quite a good budget option. So I've had some really interesting experiences with this microphone. Because it was such a unique part of my stream and when I upgraded this, I upgraded a number of other things on my stream. I almost branded myself around this microphone to an extent to the point where I made a custom stinger and included images of the microphone almost like references to the microphone as part of my streaming overlays this microphone gears itself as a vocal microphone so using it for streaming or for podcasts or things like that should lend itself to being a perfect fit really. The microphone touts itself as having a wide cardioid polar pattern. It has a really neat on and off switch here which is quite chunky and it's just really visually appealing and it's also got this kind of 90 degree swivel thing. When you're using this microphone it really does feel very robust. It's very chunky and that's kind of one of the appeals for me. The fact that it's made out of aluminium as well, I just absolutely loved. It's a slight hindrance that it didn't come with any kind of swivel or kind of adjustability. I'm talking about here the XLR three pin connector, but I think for most people that's probably not going to be an issue. You can get the extenders and there's other devices you can fit to a boom arm. Obviously upgrading from a USB microphone in the HyperX quadcast, I was mainly looking forward to a quality kick in the audio. But one thing I'd never really experienced from the polar pattern of the HyperX Quadcast was just how close you actually have to be for a dynamic microphone. And that's probably my own naivety, but that's something I knew I'd be able to get used to. So that wasn't too much of a problem. As a streamer, sometimes you can get quite animated and your head isn't always fixed in the same position. So having a cardioid pattern that's just slightly more spread does help and lend itself for a streamer. It was quite important to me to have something that wouldn't pick up keyboard noises from behind, as well as potentially the humming noise of a PC that's working hard to stream or game or whatever else. But I fully understand that many people that are watching this video might be watching this video from the point of view of when you're going to be singing songs and recording. I don't know how much value I can add to the people that are looking to use this as a vocal microphone. So I have very high expectations of this microphone whilst at the same time being quite conscious of the fact that it was relatively cheap but had the same gear inside of it as the SM7B. So in terms of pricing, you're looking to pay probably around about the 100 to the 100 30 pounds for this. That's around about 150 to 170 dollars. One thing that I found really difficult when I first started using this microphone was just getting the compressor settings right within my Go XLR. The EQ settings I could pretty much get right straight away. I was fairly happy with the actual sound of my voice through this microphone. The issue was getting the blend between not getting background noise and actually getting too much background noise. Well, that was relatively easy to solve with the gates and attenuation. Problem is, no matter what I tried on the compressor side of things, I couldn't avoid avoid this issue of moving my head slightly one side or the other, cutting in and out and causing inconsistencies with the volume level. And honestly, in total, I've probably spent five or six hours over the course of three months whilst I've been using this microphone trying to get these settings right. Now, the Go XLR isn't the best 
software out there. But it is very good software and it's widely used software. It shouldn't have any problems whatsoever with a microphone like this. I just want to reiterate that the actual sound of my voice coming through this, I was really quite happy with. And the EQ settings that I applied through the GoXLR app were absolutely fine for me. There is just too much inconsistency in the cardioid pattern when my head's in slightly different positions. And I understand that some of that's a dynamic microphone issue, but I didn't expect it to be quite as bad as the experience that I've had with it in terms of those inconsistencies. And just to illustrate, this is the cardioid polar pattern. You're expecting to take sound away from the back or not register sound at all. And as you get more towards the front of the microphone to pick up more and more of the frequencies. But as you see, even at the kind of 70 and 80 degree angles here, on either side, you're still getting massive amounts of frequencies coming through to the microphone. And what that means is if I'm coming at the microphone from a slight angle here or here, it shouldn't make much of a difference to the actual audio pickup. From my experience, this was more like the pattern that I've experienced, which means it, when I'm jigging around and doing silly things on stream, even just coming over here has meant that I've not always got a consistency of sound from this microphone. This doesn't mean that this microphone's bad for vocalists or people that have a tendency to keep their head very still whilst they're streaming. It's just that for anyone who's even remotely animated whilst they stream, you're going to struggle to keep a consistent pattern with this in terms of your audio levels. On top of that, I also found I had quite a lot of issues with sibilance and plosives with this microphone, more so than I'd experienced with the USB microphone. Although I was willing to accept some of that because the overall quality of the voice and the sound quality was much better with this microphone, particularly paired with a half decent software like the GoXLR app. Nonetheless, I did try to tune out some of the sibilance by taking out some of the frequency ranges for sibilance, but I've just not been able to ultimately get rid of the plosives from this more than I think I will be able to with another microphone that perhaps has a little bit more protection. The problem with this mic is I want it to be on display as it is, so you don't want to put any kind of filter in front of of it because that kind of ruins the aesthetics of the mic. So it puts you in a bit of a difficult position where you're forced to put up with the sibilance and the plosives for the sake of the aesthetics of the mic. One thing I noticed when I held the microphone up to the light, this gray mesh that you see here you can actually see through that all the way through it. And there's kind of a faint outline of the actual cartridge that's inside it. And again, this is the Unidime, same one that's used the SM7B with a slight tweak to it, apparently. I'm not an audio expert here, and it just feels like the distance between your mouth and the microphone and then that cartridge is just a little bit too close to be able to get the sound consistency, which therefore then creates some sibilance and plosives. But let's just talk very briefly about the pros and cons of this microphone. The pros, of course, it looks beautiful. It's fairly iconic. And it's quite a rare microphone. I've, I've yet to see a single streamer have this microphone. It is robust. It feels like it's going to last a long time. Easy connection to XLR. And it sounds really, really nice. The actual voice sound, that is. And, of course, the price. It's a relatively cheap microphone for what you are actually getting for your money. Some of the cons, it is a little bit chunky. I found I had some difficulty getting the positioning right of the microphone at times, particularly when I first started with this microphone. Given that the condenser microphone I was able to be further away from previously, but ultimately you want this in shot. You don't want to have this out of shot. And to be honest, you would need it to be in shot because if you don't have it in shot, it's not going to pick up your voice. Another con, of course, as I demonstrated earlier in Photoshop, cardioid polar pattern just does not feel right to me. The advertised pattern to what you actually get with this microphone. So ultimately I've seen regular cutouts in the audio and inconsistencies. Why is this important? Well, first of all, having a consistent audio quality is better than having a sometimes better, sometimes worse audio because that range of different quality will be picked up by your audience. So I would argue strongly that having a slightly lower quality audio, but it being consistently at that level is better. And it's a very similar thing with picture quality and lighting. But more to the point, I found myself constantly having kind of anxiety about the sound that was coming through this microphone whilst I was streaming and whilst I was recording videos. And it is ultimately for that reason that I've decided to go for the SM7B and to try that out as a dynamic microphone in place of this one. Okay, that's going to cost me three times the price and I will be selling this one. But I feel like having give this three or four months worth of time and really tweaked around with the settings just doesn't feel suitable. So I would say ultimately, if you're a streamer looking at this microphone, if you're an animated streamer in particular, or if you're inexperienced with dynamic microphones, I wouldn't recommend you getting this microphone. However, if you're a vocalist, generally tend to not be too animated on your streams, this might be something worthwhile considering and taking the risk on. The reason why I say that is because it is cheap. It is beautiful. It is sturdy.
Hopefully you guys have found this useful. I don't normally do these types of videos, so if you found it useful, let me know. Let me know if there's anything you would change. If you like this content, if you don't like this content, maybe I should stop doing this. I don't know. I probably won't do a review of the SM7B, only because there's a lot of content out there for the SM7B, whereas this microphone, there is not as much content out there. So I wanted to put a review out there in case there are any streamers that perhaps see my videos or my streams and are considering getting this microphone. Something I just cannot recommend it. And there are other options out there. Hope you guys continue to level up your streams. Have a wonderful day and take it easy.